guys, and welcome to yet another episode of I Was There, starring Dave Munoz, going through time to some iconic, legendary rock and roll moments that he's got exclusive photos of. Incredible stuff. So get subscribed, click the bell. Today we're talking about Boston, okay? We've got some awesome images. You've got some awesome images to show. Um, so let's start with the concert, and where was it, and what was kind of the hype surrounding it leading up to the event? It was over at the uh, Oakland Arena, which is where the Golden State Warriors played for the longest time. So indoor arena held maybe 13, 12, 13,000 people. Um, but it was sold out. It was sold out and it was kind of um, kind of interesting as well because as we were walking in it and we got tickets for it early, which would have been about probably a month or two before the show, not like it is today. Mm -hmm. um, but as we were walking in, it was, it was kind of interesting to walk into our seats. We took a look over to our left and we saw Greg Rowley and Neil Schoen from Journey sitting there too. In fact, we, we could pop a picture up of them too at, uh, at the concert. And so we kind of knew we were in for something good. I saw them previously in 1976 at Winterland. Okay, so you had seen them before. I had seen them once before when they released their first album, which was self-titled, and it was just, it was absolutely incredible. Their second album, Don't Look Back, which they were touring um, during this particular show, I wasn't as crazy about it as I was the first one. Um, the first one again was just, you know, for a debut album, um, probably one of the best debut albums I've ever heard, outside of maybe with, with uh, Ronnie Montrose with their first album back in 1973. They're fantastic, but uh, nonetheless, we wanted to see it too, and I, mean, I think more people were there for the old, or the first album, than the sophomore album for Boston. So you uh, you actually felt like it was more of an experience for the first concert. That's really cool, because I think, it, you know, over all the, concert, the concerts that you've seen, and the photos that you've been able to take, you gotta be ranking them in your mind, right? Oh, yeah. Eventually, like what you said that it was hard to name one particular band, right? Right. Uh, but could you single out maybe in your mind one particular concert that you thought was the, simply the best musical experience that you've been through? Boy, it would probably be a toss-up between um, Friday, September, or December fifteenth. 1978 at Winterland with Springsteen, then following up the next night with Queen. I think it was a combination of those two because you never really came down after the first show. Yeah, it was just, it was, it was unbelievable. Wow. So I look at that almost as a weekend as well. But but Boston, again, in fact, it's, it's funny, an interesting thing about the 1976 show at Winterland um, with Boston, that's the, uh, I've seen a lot of these things thrown, but it's the only time I ever got a drumstick from a concert too, and this was from 76 at Winterland with Boston. What? So awful beat up, yeah, because drums, you know, always, drums oh, are always yeah. throwing our sticks out there, and I've seen hundreds of them go over my head. Um, this is the first one I ever got uh, got my hands on. Wow, that's a true legendary piece. Wow. Way back. This is incredible. Wow. So how, how did you get your hands on it? They, they threw it they, and they just threw it out, it? And, and that's one of the benefits of being six foot four. <laughs> right, I bet. Because I jumped up and grabbed it. Wow, this has seen some days for sure. That yeah, was wow. probably... Brand new at the beginning of the show, because they're, they're they're pretty rough on these things. I bet. That's so why they generally have about a dozen or so off to the side they can reach them because they're breaking these things all the time. So, uh, what was what was the favorite moment from this particular concert? I think when they opened up the show with Rock and Roll Band, which they did back in '76 at Winterland, which is an autobiographical um, number about the band and really where they came out of and, and what they had to do. With great lyrics with that, but that was that that really kicked things off. And, and it was great. And, and with them playing as well there, it was kind of interesting. Their sophomore album, again, I mentioned I wasn't that crazy about it. And I don't think the rest of the people were. They came to kind of hear the, the, the re, you know, repeat of the, uh, the first album before first, that. Right. And they're um, such a talented band. Tom Schultz, who, who was lead guitar player and really the leader of Boston. Uh, Bradley Delp is a vocal guy, but um, Tom Schultz is the, the one who writes everything. And in fact, their first album, he recorded all the tracks for all the instruments, except vocals on their first, and he did it down in the garage. And then he went to the record company and said, we like it, but we want to record it again. And as the story goes, he went through the whole recording process that they wanted, and then took his originals that he put together, and that's what's on that first album. So, With so, Bradley Delp's vocals. Wow, so an incredibly talented musician just all around, being able to do all those parts. Yeah, he's got an engineering degree from MIT. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, not, not yeah. your average rock and roll guitar player. Yeah, not at all, you wouldn't think. So as we're gonna do with all of these episodes, you know we have to talk about the shots, we have to talk about the photos. So what was the shot, the best photo that you got from this concert, um, and how did that come to be? 
what moment was that? I think the best, I was probably no more, again, using a camera with, with the, you couldn't use a zoom lens because you couldn't get enough light, you would get all dark subjects, so you had to be very close to your subject. But I've got a picture of, of Bradley Delp just belting out vocals at the very front of the stage, no more than maybe five, eight feet away from me at all. And um, you, you can just feel it too with the hair bone and he's just really ripping at it. So it's something else, but there's also another one that you couldn't really get, but when Tom Schultz sat down on the, on the keys, and uh, one of their biggest hits is a song called Foreplay Long Time. It's the, they go into two songs, but at the very beginning, Tom Schultz is like the mad scientist. He really, with, with the keyboards going, da, 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 and, and really almost to a, um, a, a manic um, speed. And, but then listening to each piece come in and come in and grow and grow and grow. I mean, that song itself, Foreplay Long Time, or those two songs combined, I guess I should say, um, I damn near blew out the speakers in my car listening to that because you couldn't listen to that softly. It just wouldn't because as it builds, you have to build and you crank the volume a little bit more. And that's that's one of the things too that I wanted to, since I love playing in my car so much, I wanted to hear it live again. And when they did it live, um, it was just, it was fantastic. Wow. How many photos did you get from that? From Boston, I've probably got maybe four or five photos. Okay. That I think we'll, we'll be able to show here in just a couple seconds. Yeah. Um, but different pieces too behind the uh, the van. Yeah. It must have been hard to kind of be behind the camera also at, while experiencing such you know legendary musicians and then so oh let me get this you know this moment was that something that came natural to you like just did you see the and experience the whole thing through the camera lens or was it kind of a thing where you were there for the music and the concert and then you you know, pulled out that moment and you had that eye for when it was time to take those photos. You know, you're, you're absolutely right. When you watch something through the lens of a camera, it is much different than, than seeing it live. Um, with, with most of the bands that I shot as well, the camera wasn't in front of my face the entire time. It wasn't because I'm just too much of a musical lover and I wasn't willing to sacrifice, you know, that punch that I came here for. But I did have it up, up and, you know, the camera up enough to, uh, to get a few shots from that. Well, Dave, uh, this is incredible stuff from the drumstick to the to the music and the concert that you were able to go to uh, seeing Boston twice uh, is an incredible thing and thank you so much for taking these images it's truly um, an incredible thing that you were able to capture these moments so uh, thank you guys for watching and joining as Dave Munoz takes us through some incredible rock and roll legendary moments um, through the lens of his camera and he's got incredible stories uh, right there, right along with the photos. So subscribe, click the bell, and we'll see you in the next episode. Dave Munoz and Chris Grant Jr. Take care. See you later.